guys thanks for tuning in it's erin speaking from what's erin up to and erin has decided or me as it were i have decided that i am going to do a restoration project on this here toadstool yeah can you i don't know if you can see that hang on wordy 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 whoa there we are hey there we are that's better and we'll just move that camera all right um i'll give you a bit of a background before we start this is this uh, is going to take quite a while to restore this poor toadstool i made this toadstool um oh my god a, oh, probably about five or six years ago now and i made it when i didn't have um a lot of experience when it comes to polymer clay and um here we are, X amount of years later, and I've got quite a bit of experience when it comes to polymer clay. Um, well, in a basically, in a bit of a nutshell, I made this toadstool. It was my first ever one, and it was my favourite because it, you know, I love toadstools, but I do, I love the blue. And um, oh, it, it was beautiful. And I gave it to my daughter, and she had it in her fairy garden. And oh, it was just lovely. It was so magical. And then, but what I didn't realise was is that polymer clay does not fare very well for very long unless it's sealed in some sort of a resin um it doesn't fare very well being outside and unfortunately it deteriorated very very quickly well quickly what's quickly what's the definition of quickly i'd say after about two years um it it wasn't a happy piece it just really wasn't a happy piece anyway in a nutshell uh cut a long story short about a year ago a little over a year ago i decided i was going to restore this toadstool and i did actually make a start and i messed it up <laughs> yeah messed it up and uh i i put it in the oven and I just did, oh, stupid rookie mistake. I didn't check the temperature of the oven and I burnt the toadstool. And all the top of this toadstool ended up going black. It was burnt. I was devastated. Um, basically, what I did is I made like a polymer clay paint. And how I did that was taking the same colour as the polymer clay that the uh, top of the toadstool was made out of. And I mushed it down into as literally as soft and as gooey as I could get it. And then I mixed it in with a load of liquid Fimo. And then put that on the top. It's not perfect. It's not great. It'll never be back to how it was. But at least it's not grey anymore. It's blue. Which is quite something. Right, so anyway, we're going to restore this thing in uh, segments. Um, I've already taken the liberties of putting a new bottom on. It was while I was making the bottom and putting these on, I thought to myself, ooh, wouldn't it be nice if we had a little video to see what Erin was up to? Again, haha, because Erin gets up to quite a bit. Um, so I made this, uh, I've put the, a new bottom on. I've, I've cleaned it all up. I've took, took off everything that, you know, I had thought we was going to go on there. And I've changed my mind. And I've, I've, yeah, I've changed my mind as I do a lot. Um, and I've made this bottom and I've put these on. These weren't on before, but I put these on. These are quite cute. Um, they're only little wood, little wood slices. And I get these off of um, very popular uh, auction sites. You pick them up nice and cheap. They're not expensive. Um, and these are wood slices. And they're probably about the same size of about a pound coin. Um, and I've cut them to fit and I've put them on. And what I'm going to do today is today we're going to make a door to go on this thing. Now the original door was pink. I'm going to stick with the pink. Um, and I'm going to make that as best I can. And then, you know, we can see. So enjoy and, uh, you know, let's, let's get on with it. Stop waffling on, all right?
Right. Right then. Okay, so that's done. So what I've done here is I've made a hang on, bring over. I've made a little thing to go over the door. I don't know if you can see that on camera. I don't know if you could see while I was mixing it up. It's actually brown, it's got a little thingy of gold going through there. The texture is really, really important. I've got a little bit of black, a little bit of silver in there to make it look a bit like raw iron. And while I was at it, you could see me mixing up. I mixed up this uh, purpley pinky colour out of a load of scraps. And this is going to be the door. So what we're going to do then is we need to decide roughly how big our door is going to be. Now, I think it might be the size of a £2 coin maybe slightly bigger i think a two pence or even a ten pence are just simply not going to cut it right okay so the size of our door is going to be roughly the size of a two pound coin i might go just a weeny bit bigger on there so what we're going to do today is we're going to make the door and we're going to stick our door on and um, I'm going to put on some like little handles and things and then I've got some bits and pieces that kind of need to go on there all right so we're going to make those and uh, and then we'll we'll get on with it all right I'll see you in a sec
Right, okay. Now, oops. So we're back. I hope we're back. Okay, so I'll tell you what, all that speedy clay making is exhausting. Let's bring these things over that I've made over here. Whoops. Okay. I don't know if you could see that. Probably my hands might have been in the way. I'm not very good at this sort of thing, really, this filming malarkey. But what we've done is we've got a nice little door there. Whoops, hang on. I need this thing. Nice little door. And it's got some nice little raw iron door hinges on there. Isn't they cute? Yeah. You probably saw that I made that wicker thing over the over the door again. I wasn't happy with the first one. It was too big. Right, let's have the thing. Let's zoom out a wee bit so you can see what we're doing. Okay, now, now, now. I'm going to use some liquid Fimo. Um, dear, oh dear, this bottle has been worse for wear. I use this as a glue. This is brilliant as a baking glue. Now, I know that um, Sculpey do something very, very similar um, because you can't use super glue at this stage because you can't put anything that's got super glue on it in the oven. You're just, you're just asking for trouble. It's the fumes and various bits and pieces that come off that. So what I use as a bakeable glue, and you can do it with the Fimo, yeah, is I use the Fimo liquid as a bakeable glue, and it's brilliant. I know that Sculpey do a bake and bond. Um, and I know a lot of people rate that. I've never used it, so I, I cannot give you an opinion because I've never used it. Um, so I'll just give you an opinion on what I've got. Right, let's have a look at this ear toaster. Okay, now we're going to see about getting this on here. Uh, let's move that out of the way. Right, now because this is baked already, hang on a second, I need to just plug in. My battery is going to go. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Now why does stuff like that happen at the most inconvenient times? <laughs> That'll teach me for not making sure my phone was charged before I started. Right, where was we? Uh, right, yes, we was going to stick... The door on here. Now this is already, as you know, this has already been baked. So what we do have to do is try and um, not make it pliable, but you, you you need some sort of adhesive on there. And we've already covered the whole Fimo, um, Fimo liquid. Now I've just dabbed my finger in a little bit and I'm going to, um, actually in fact, no, I'm going to cover the back of this. In a little bit now you want a decent amount but without too much because if you put too much your creation will quite literally slide off obvious i know but i made that mis rookie mistake many a time to my peril i suppose that's why we practice isn't it really so we can get perfect okay there we go right let's put this on shall we now what's on there now, don't push down too hard because you're basically, not only do you, will you end up putting a fingerprint in your work, which you really don't want because it just looks awful, um, but you'll also lose a lot of your detail as well. But just pry enough pressure there just to get that on. Make sure it's in the right place as well before you stick it in the oven. Again, obvious, I know, but rookie mistakes, you know, they do happen. Now, I lost a little bit of my detail when I drew this on earlier. Oh, dear. You know the old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Oh. Fudge. Ooh. The old hamsters are awake there. See if you can hear them. Our little baby boys. Honey bun and sherbet. My daughter's. Right, so that's on. Lovely. And now we want to do the same with the wickery bit that goes across the top. Um, so maybe stick a, a little bit of this on, just to give it a little something. Yeah, this is quite sticky, this, um, this Fimo, so you're not going to want a lot. Yeah, 
I don't know if you can see that in that light. It's got a really pretty little gold fleck in it. That I do like the gold and the silvers in the Fimo. Okay, let's put this on then. so pretty oh that is pretty there we go again sorry I keep taking it out of camera shot don't I don't hate me I'm new Right, okay, you're going to have little bits like that poking out from the bottom there. Now, you can either chop them off if you want to. Uh, I'm not going to. I think it adds to the whole um, the whole design of it. And you've got, oh, let's adjust that so you can see. Yes, these little things here. Now, some people I know would probably cut them off there, and you can do that. I have done that in the past. I, however, am not going to do that. I'm going to just tuck that in, that little gap there and underneath. And the reason is, I'm, whoops, is, hang on a minute. Oh, blow. Okay, get some, I'm going to get some female on that. On there and a bit on there. There you go. Be a little bit like a glue. There we go. Right, tuck that in. Under there and on there like that. And that will literally just finish that off. Things like this, it's the detail that matter. There we go. We'll do it on one side. And do you know what? We're going to do the same thing on this side. Now I'm going to get some, like a little roll of theme. Oops. Move that out of the way. Oh, my camera work is shoddy. I'm so sorry. Okay, stick a bit in there. Stick a bit on there like that. Yeah, it's a bit of glue. We like a bit of glue. There we go. Shove it in and in the gap. There we go. Like that. There we go. Put a little pat down just to make sure that it's you know the best version of itself it can be there we go and we have oh no hang on we haven't got ourselves a door we haven't finished oh dear I'm jumping the gun i'm a bit of a sucker for detail so much so that i forget to put it on um i bought on various um internet selling sites these little things so little locking key and you were going to tell you what we're going to do. We are going to stick that on. Oops, hang on, I'm going to lose my. Come out a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. There we go. Right. There we are, look. Little locking key. And no house is complete without... A little horseshoe. Now, I don't know if the horses belong in the fairy world, but they certainly belong in my fairy world. And these are made of Tibetan silver. They And the lovely thing is, is they just don't, they don't get damaged when you put them in the oven. And once you've stuck them in the clay like that, they actually just stay there. You don't need to glue them or anything. They're amazing. I love using Tibetan silver. And I use Tibetan silver quite a lot, actually. Probably a little bit too much. There we go. Right, and do you know what? That is our door today. And I think today we're going to leave that as that. And then we're going to tackle... Yeah, so as I was saying, we're going to get this in the oven, get it baked. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes then. So I don't know when that's going to be, but hopefully it will be very, very soon that I will be back. Um, I don't technically go back to work until the 1st of April. 
So hopefully I can get this thing finished before then. All right, so lovely. Uh, thank you very much for taking part, well, watching today. It means the world to me that, you know, that you're interested in anything that I would be wanting to make or anything like that. So, um, yeah, that's great. Thanks a lot. I'll catch you later. Bye.